Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hello everyone and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me here today as we learn how to crochet the puff stitch slouch hat. While you're here, please take a moment to subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel and also check me out across social media. Today we are going to be making the puff stitch slouch hat, which is this hat that you can see right here. And it has uh, quite a bit of texture and it's made with this fun yarn that kind of came out recently by Yarnspirations called a Karen Latte Cake. So that's this one right here. For this project, you are going to need one of those Karen Latte Cakes, as well as a six millimeter crochet hook, a pair of scissors and a yarn needle for weaving in your ends. Of course, you also need a copy of the free crochet pattern, which can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and all of the links will be found in the notes for this video tutorial. Okay, so now that we have our, all of our materials together, let us get started. So for this project, uh, you are going to work it in sort of two different parts. The first thing we are going to make is the brim of the hat. And the brim of, of the hat is worked in rows. So this hat will be worked from the bottom up to the top of the crown. It will be worked in rows. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you have a basic understanding of crochet as far as how to make a slip knot and uh, single crochet st stitches and simple stitches. Some of the more complicated stitches and concepts I will be showing you in more detail here in this video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by making the brim of the hat. As mentioned, we're going to make our slip knot. And using our six millimeter crochet hook, we will start with a chain of 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now you will notice that this is a fairly furry yarn, uh, but it is still possible to crochet with it. It might just take a little bit of getting used to. Okay, now uh, once you have chained 11 stitches, you are going to slip stitch in the second chain from your hook. So there's the first one. In the second chain from your hook, you're going to slip stitch in that chain and then in each chain all the way to the end. So for your slip stitch, just insert your hook, pull up a loop and pull it through. So slip stitch all the way across. Uh, so you'll have a total of 10 stitches. nine and ten. Then you will chain one and you're going to turn your work. The brim of the hat, remember, is worked in rows. And then working in the back loop only, you are going to slip stitch your way across one more time. So to find the back loop of your uh, of the stitch, you're going to hold your uh, your fabric so that you can see the top of the stitches which look like little V's. You can kind of see them here. When you crochet in the back loop only, you are simply going to, taking a look at these stitches, the loop that is on the side furthest away from you, that is called your back loop. And you're going to work under that loop only. Normally you would insert your hook under both of those stitches. But for the back loop only, you're going to insert your hook under the back loop, the one that's furthest away from you only, and you will work your stitch. So in this case, it's a slip stitch. So I've inserted my hook and I'm going to slip stitch. And do that all the way across, always only in the back loop. So back loop only, 
slip stitch across. You will, will again have a total of 10 slip stitches at the end of this row. Now what working in this back loop is going to do is it's going to give you a little bit of ribbing uh, and make your fabric quite stretchy as uh, you would often see in the brim of a knit or crochet hat. Um, people do their ribbing differently. Some people will use a single crochet or a half double crochet. I prefer the slip stitch because it just gives it a nice tight uh, knit look. So I've slip stitched all the way across in the back loop only. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to turn my work and then I'm going to do the same thing uh, all the way across again. So again working in my back loop only insert your hook and you're going to slip stitch all the way across. Now for the rest of the brim of the hat you are simply going to repeat that row two, that slip stitch in the back loop only all the way across. You're going to repeat that until your work from the beginning measures about 17 inches. Okay, so repeat row two, the slip stitch in the back loop only until your work from the beginning measures about 17 inches. And then at that point, there's no need to fasten off. Uh, I will show you where to go next. I'm going to do one more row of these slip stitches so that you can see what uh, it is starting to look like here. Again, you're slip stitching. I find it helpful to keep your stitches a little looser when you're doing just straight slip stitches across easier to work in that back loop only. Sometimes because the yarn is hairy it is a little bit hard to find. There you go. So if you take a look you can see the ribbing kind of starting to pull through there. Okay so continue that all the way across uh, until you have approximately 17 inches. Okay, so now once you have your 17 inches, uh, your work will look something like this. Now just a quick note for the brim of the sample hat that I did here. I made sure that my brim, because uh, it uh, kind of bugs me <laughs> when it's not, to be honest, um, the brim of my hat is all one color. So to get it all the one color, I ended up working it, uh, working the color until it ended and then I cut it and then I moved and found uh, more of the same color in the cake and reattached it there and then continued to work because I wanted the brim of my hat to be all the same color. You're welcome to do that as well or as I have done here on this sample, I've just left it so you can see the color change kind of falls uh, about a third of the way through. Okay, so once you have worked 17 inches of your ribbing, and this is it here, you can see it's quite stretchy. It makes it nice and comfortable. If you find it's a little bit big for your head, you may want to do a half an inch to an inch less, or if it's a little bit small, you can add a few rows of ribbing onto it to get it the right size. Okay, so this is 17 inches. Then what you're going to do is you're not going to fasten off. You're going to take the two shorter ends of your work, and you're going to fold it and you're going to hold it together just like this. We're then going to create a seam and join these two ends together. The way that I like to do it is by working in the back loop of the side that is closer to me, closest to me, and or I guess is in the front loop, sorry, and then working in the front loop of the side that's furthest from me, I simply make a slip stitch. So I'm working through both thicknesses through the front loop of both pieces and I'm just working a slip stitch all the way across. So again you're going to have uh, 10 slip stitches and this is going to bring our two sides together so that it uh, makes it round. Okay. 
right, again, there is no need to fasten off when you get to the end. Front loop, front loop, and slip stitch together. more stitches. And there we go. Front loop, front loop, slip stitch together. Once you have come to the end, what you're going to do is you're going to turn your work. So this is my seam here. I'm going to turn my work right side out. So I now have the right side of my fabric facing me. You can see this is where I've done the join and it kind of pulls nicely together. And I haven't fastened off. And what I'm going to do, once I have turned it right side out, I have a nice join here, I'm now going to begin working it around, around this long edge of my brim. I'm going to do that by chaining one. And then I'm going to work 74 half double crochet stitches all the way around and you want to make sure that it is kept even so a couple are, are I guess one trick to make sure that uh, your stitches are placed evenly around you can find the middle of your work and then simply place a stitch marker there and then you need know that you need half the stitches on one side and half the stitches on the other regardless of what how you do it you want to have 74 half double crochet stitches worked all the way around the brim of your hat. To make your half double crochet stitch, you are yarning over, inserting your hook, yarning over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. I'm not paying too much attention to where I'm placing my hook other than that I know it's secure. I like to put my hook through the fabric uh, down a couple of threads below um, so I know that the stitch isn't going to pull apart or anything like that or uh, pull a hole in my work um, and uh, I'm making sure that the stitches are spread evenly throughout the brim. So continue working on that 74 half double crochet stitches all the way around the brim of your hat and meet me back here. Once you have evenly worked 74 half double crochet stitches all the way around the brim of your hat, you will come back to the first stitch and you are simply going to join with a slip stitch in that first half double crochet. So join with a slip stitch. Then you are going to turn your work and chain one. Now we are set to begin our first round of puff stitches. So because you turned you will have the wrong side facing you and that is because when we work our puff stitches they're going to be, uh, when we work them they face the opposite uh, direction opposite to you. So you will see here in just one sec. So we've turned and we've chained one. We're going to start by placing one single crochet stitch in the next stitch. So for the first one, that's our first stitch here. Place one single crochet in the first stitch. Then you're going to work your first puff stitch. To work the puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook in the next stitch, and yarn over and pull up a loop. You're going to do that for a total of four times. So that was all in the same stitch. That was the first one. Yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, that's two, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop, that's three, yarn over, insert your hook in the same stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop, that's four. You are now going to have nine loops on your hook. You will then yarn over and pull through all nine loops. And that is your puff stitch. You're then going to follow that puff stitch with another single crochet in the next stitch. And then you're going to repeat. So the repeat will be single crochet, puff 
puff stitch, single crochet, puff stitch, all the way around the brim of your hat. So I've worked a single crochet, then a puff stitch, now a single crochet, I am set to do another puff stitch. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Do that four times. Yarn over, insert my hook in the next stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. That's number two. Yarn over, insert my hook in the same stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. Number three. And one more time, yarn over, insert my hook in the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. That's number four. I now have nine loops on my hook, so I'm going to yarn over and pull my hook through all nine loops on my hook. My puff stitch is made. I'm now going to single crochet in the next stitch. So you're going to repeat that all the way around and you will see that on the right side, you now have these puff stitches that are forming right here. So you're going to repeat that single crochet, puff stitch all the way around and meet me back when you come back to the beginning of the round. Once you have worked that round of puff stitches and single crochets all the way around, you will end with one puff stitch in that final stitch. And then once again, you will join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. So just join with a slip stitch to the first single crochet. You're then going to turn your work and chain one. For this next round, round three, you are simply going to single crochet in each stitch, in each puff stitch and each single crochet stitch all the way across. You're going to start with that single crochet stitch that you joined in, single crochet, and then single crochet in the puff stitch. So you will do that all the way around. You will have a total once again of 74 single crochet stitches all the way around your work. Once you come around uh, to back to the beginning, you're going to join with a slip stitch in your first single crochet. Then the next uh, four, uh, rounds four to 15, are simply going to be a repeat of those last two rounds. So you will do this round of single crochet stitches, then you're going to turn, join with a slip stitch and turn, and then you will work a round of single crochet stitches and puff stitches. So single crochet, puff, single crochet, puff, all the way around, join with a slip stitch, turn your work, and then single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So you will repeat rows two and three for a total of six more times. After you have repeated those six more times for a total of 15 rounds, you will repeat round two, your puff stitch single crochet row. You will repeat that one more time. So work on that and meet me back here and I will go through the decrease with you. Okay, so once you have come to the end of round 16, your work will look something like this. From the beginning, I have my broom down here, and then I have these uh, rounds of textured puffs, puff stitches uh, in between rows, uh, rounds of single crochet. And uh, I have uh, a large opening here at the top. Once you come to round 17, you are going to begin working your decrease rounds. Now the decrease rounds that I've done always fall on the single crochet round. So you'll have finished off with a puff stitch single crochet round. So you're going to uh, turn your work, you've joined with a slip stitch. You're going to turn your work so your right side is facing out and you're going to work a round of single crochet stitches. But this time when you work your single crochet stitches, you're going to begin by chaining one, and you're going to single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. So there's one single crochet, 
and then single crochet in the next seven. So for a total of eight, single crochet uh, in the next eight stitches. So there's four, five, six, seven, and eight. Our next stitch will be a single crochet two together. This is what's going to decrease the number of stitches in this round. To work your single crochet two together, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch and you're going to draw up a loop. Now instead of finishing the single crochet stitch, you're going to insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you will have a total of three loops on your hook. You're then going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. And that is your single crochet two together. Next, you will single crochet in the next eight stitches. One single crochet in each. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then single crochet two together. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. Your single crochet two together. Then you're going to repeat again. Single crochet in the next eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, single crochet two together, insert your hook in the next stitch and draw up a loop, insert your hook in the next stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through three loops. So you're going to continue that pattern, single crochet in each of the next eight stitches, then single crochet two together, all the way around to the last four stitches. When you come to the last four stitches, you will simply work one single crochet in each and then join with a slip stitch to your first round. So continue that and then meet me back here for round 18. Once you have joined with a slip stitch in your first stitch, you're going to chain one, you're going to turn, you will now work the pattern single crochet, puff stitch, in each stitch all the way around. So single crochet and then puff stitch. There's no decrease in this round. Puff stitch and you will do that in each stitch around and join with a slip stitch to the first stitch. This is round 18. Once you have worked your round of single crochet and puff stitches all the way around, you'll join with a slip stitch and chain one and turn. You will now work your next round, your next decrease round. So where you, uh, in round 17, you worked one single crochet in each of the next eight stitches. This time you're going to chain one and work one single crochet in each of the next seven stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then you will work your single crochet two together. So insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and pull through, pull through all three loops on your hook. And then you'll repeat that. Work one single crochet in each of the next seven stitches, and then work one single crochet two together. You will continue to do that all the way around your hat, and then uh, you will join again with a slip stitch. 
Now for, you're going to continue alternating the rounds, the decrease rounds with your single crochet and puff stitch rounds. And as you do that, you are going to keep decreasing by one single crochet each time. So we did a uh, single crochet in the next eight, and then we did number a uh, single crochet in the next seven. So the next decrease round that you do will be a single crochet and then eight to the next six, and then single crochet two together. So that is sort of the pattern that you are following. And you're going to do that all the way down to uh, a single crochet in each of the next four stitches. And once you have decreased that round and single crocheted in each of the next four stitches and then two together, you will complete one more round of single crochet and puff stitches. And then you are going to fasten off your work, leaving a very long tail, which you will then use to sew the top of your hat together. So continue working these decrease rounds interspersed with your single crochet and your puff stitch rounds. If you need help, uh, go head over to my blog and download the pattern. It might help you keep track of the rows there. And then once you come to your decrease round in round 25, where you're single crocheting in each of the next four stitches, then two together, you'll complete after that one more round of single crochet and puff stitches, and then fasten off leaving a long tail and I will show you how I uh, sewed my top of the hat together. Now once you reach your final puff stitch, it'll be around 26, you've done your decreases down to four single crochet and then single crochet two together and then you've done one more round of single crochet and puff stitches. You are going to join with a slip stitch in that first stitch and then you're going to fasten off your work. So you will have a fairly sizable opening at the top of your hat. You've left a long tail because we are going to use this tail to sew the top of our hat closed. So what you're going to do is just take a yarn needle, going to thread your yarn through it, and then what I did to sew my hat closed is I just took my yarn needle and I wove the thread or the yarn in and out of the stitches that are all the way around the top of the hat. I just wove it in and out just like so all the way around the top. You may have a way that you prefer. Uh, I just find this way is easy and uh, kind of fun. So just weave your yarn in and out all the way around the top of your hat. And then once you come back to the beginning which I am almost there, I guess I wasn't quite. Just like so. And once you come back to the beginning, you are going to just pull the yarn through, just kind of like a drawstring. And you're going to see that it's going to close the top of your hat quite nicely, just like that, and it will bunch together. And then what I did is once I pulled it closed and I made sure it was nice and tight, I stuck my hook down in through to the center of the hat and turned it inside out. There we go. And I just pull my yarn through and again make sure that that hole in the top there is nice and tight. And then I kind of cheat a little bit. I just make, kind of gather some of that yarn together through a puff stitch and pull it through 
And I do make a little bit of a knot. This is all on the inside of the hat, so none of it is seen. And I want the top of my hat to be fairly secure, especially with this yarn that is a little bit slippery. So I make a little bit of a knot, stick it through again. Just like this, stick it through that hole, pull it tight, and then I just take my yarn and I weave it in, weave it around through the stitches as I would do a normal fastening off with, uh, with any project. I'm just going to tuck in that end, just going to weave it through the stitches. Because the yarn is hairy and the stitches have a lot of great texture, I'm not really too concerned. This is all on the inside of the hat. And then once I am happy with how much I have woven it in there, I will take my pair of scissors, cut it off. Once you have cut it off, you're going to turn your hat right side out. And your hat make sure all your ends are woven in and your hat is now complete if you would like as an option you may add a pom-pom to the top uh, for this particular one I didn't this time just to do something a little bit different than what I have been doing but uh, that pom-pom is an option and is up to you so there you have it thank you so much for joining me for this crochet tutorial on how to crochet the puff stitch slouch once again be sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful you can also check me out across social media all the links are there in the notes for this video thank you so much for joining me happy crocheting bye